assessment. You know, how damaged am I? How hurt am I? How wounded am I? And I've taken my tongue and said, you know, you know, uh, are any of my teeth there? And, and um, he comes up to me and he says, man, you are gutsy. I don't like that. I'd like you to be my old lady. And I'm like, what? Because I want to say no. <laughs> you know, I just want to say no. And at that point, when I say no to him, he said, oh, that's not it. That, I wasn't really asking you. So now I'm his personal property, right? And in a bike club, everything is more important than the, than the woman or the, your property. I mean, your bikes are more important. Your brothers are more important. Definitely your drugs are more important. And then it's the women in the group. Um, there were three kids taken from the street. And, and please raise your hand if you understand what I'm going to say next. There were three kids taken from the street and it was for an initiation for new members. Does anybody know what that means? And so what they do is they take the kids from the street and they beat and rape and urinate on them and all that kind of stuff. And as more bizarre the new member can be, the more they are held up in esteem in the club. Does that make sense? And these kids are expandable. So if the kids live or die, it's not even an issue. And because I was his property, I wasn't turned out, and that's what they call it, is if you get turned out. Um, um, one 13-year-old girl was turned out, and she died by the end of the night. And I didn't see her death, I just heard her death. Does that make sense? Is that her screams changed, everything changed, and even scream at people to stop beating her. You've got to stop doing this because she is dying. And I remember him saying, you know, shut up or take her place. And um, I couldn't shut up because it was just too intense and I got beat up again and moved to another place. And my, my being on the street was kind of like that. I, you know, some people say, yeah, I ran away from home and it was no big deal. I didn't get those kind of experiences on the street. It's that I think that um, in Los Angeles you are picked up and used a lot, especially when you're really young. Um, what job opportunities do you think I had on the street? You said nothing? Oh, I wish. Yeah. Prostitution was one. Um, drug dealing, um, working in clubs, dancing, that kind of thing. And I couldn't, um, I, and, and if anybody's been a prostitute, please don't get offended on this, but I couldn't do that because I had been molested my whole life. You know what I mean? By my father, by uncles, by a school teacher, a guy from across the street from my elementary school rented an apartment so he could molest kids on the way home. I mean, so I, I attracted molesters growing up. And I didn't realize until I was in recovery that a molester can pick a molested kid out in about five seconds, five to seven seconds. And so, um, um, but I had all this experience. And when someone said, Sure, you need to work, you need to bring money in, and that job they gave me was prostitution, I just said, you're going to have to kill me. I can't do that. And, and so um, um, I got a job as a dancer. And, and this, I was 13 years old, my first job, right? I go to work in a sleazy club. Has anybody ever seen a dance club, strip club? I like, some, some of the guys are like, their shoulders are moving, that's it. It's like, well, maybe. In a movie one time, you know? Um, but anyhow, so, um, it, you know, when I worked in this strip club, it was a sleazy club. Um, and I don't know what makes us think that they're glamorous other than in the movies, but this was a sleazy club. They put younger kids on the day shift. Um, they get ID for us. Um, they give me a little outfit to wear. And I remember walking in saying, I can't do this. I can't do this. I started crying and somebody got right in my face. You are going to do this. You already said you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. Stop whining if you need to get high. And, I, and I'm not going to use the same language that they did because all they did, they just... Um, uh, you know, it was just obvious that I was going to do this. I got high. Um, I was told to walk on the stage and do a set. And a set in a club is you do three songs, right? And so I walked on the stage and wept the entire time. Because I couldn't stop crying. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to do this. I, you know, I don't want to look at these guys. There were some older guys that looked pretty wasted um, around the stage area. I didn't want to do this, and I just cried. And because I was young, and because I cried, I made seventy-three dollars in tips. And I just thought, you know what? This world is twisted. It's so twisted. And um, at that point, I decided, um, Greg, can you get me some water? At that point, I just decided that I was just going to, this is going to be how I live my life. This is going to be what my life looks like. And um, I need to just um, deal with it. I, I was going the other way. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 
And so, uh, <coughs> so I just decided that I really actually just have to deal with it. The more um, I got into that lifestyle, the more I just got uh, to where I just stayed high. And, I, and I'm serious, literally high. If, if I met somebody in that lifestyle, when somebody said, did you ever meet a pastor in that lifestyle? And I said, 20 of them. And do you think they were preaching to me? Mm. No. They had darker addictions, and that's how I met them. Um, the vice cop that worked in the club areas that I worked in in Los Angeles would just have, um, you would trade off favors for them, and they wouldn't arrest you. All the way to the point that when I stopped dancing and started selling heroin, I still didn't get arrested for selling heroin, and they fully knew what I was doing. Um, so um, the people I met were... Um, were twisted. Do you know what I mean? And so I, and, and I don't know where it stayed in my head, but I begged people in my head to be real. I just want you to be real. I just want you to be who you are in um, the light and in the dark, in and out of the closet. Um, if you have stuff, just have stuff, but if you don't, just don't. Do you know what I mean? And I really wanted to meet somebody that was just normal, that was just, um, um, it wasn't so twisted, didn't have sexual addictions, wasn't slamming drugs all the time. And I, I, I was at this drug house one time and I was, I don't know, 14, 15 years old and this guy comes in and he's talking to some of the other kids and there were prostitutes and so you just, you know, it, when you're kind of hanging around all that you don't really pay attention. But at one point he said he was a doctor. And I'm like, shut up. You're a doctor? And he said, yeah, cardiac surgeon. And I said, really? Can I see your hand? How cool is that? And I'm tripping, I've done acid and all kinds of stuff, and I'm looking at his hands thinking, your hands must be so different. Do you like cut people open and do heart transplants? He said, yeah. And, and, and I'm thinking, how cool is that? How cool are you? And then I'm looking around and I'm thinking, what are you doing here? And he's like, what? I said, what are you doing here? What? You know what? I'm saying, what are you doing here? Does your wife know you're here? I'm asking you a question. <laughs> what are you doing? And I am like, this guy, I am so angry because I'm thinking, he's not answering me and everybody else is telling me to shut up. Why are they telling me to shut up? No, that's not it. He's a paying customer. And they said, we are playing it. And I'm thinking, and please hear this next statement. These kids were not playing anybody. They were being played. Do you hear me? Um, somebody, do, do you hear what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Do I need to explain that? Is that sometimes, okay, I'm going to explain it just for you, Cindy, because sometimes people will say we're playing him, this doctor, this adult, but this adult is paying to have sex with children at 20 bucks or 25 bucks. And so when you think about that, who's getting played? The child. And so um, I just want to say out loud, Please, if you're going to judge anybody in this in street life, please be careful on who you judge. And, and I'm screaming at this guy. And, I, and the reason I was screaming at him is I thought, you know what? I was hoping that you were normal. And I'm yelling. I'm custom. You twisted. Blah, blah, blah. You know? And, and finally people are just dragging me away from this guy. And he's just like, and he's bringing drugs to us. He's, bringing, he's writing scripts for us. He's giving money to us because he likes kids. Right? And I just wanted him to be normal. I got one time, I, 